sorry we're starting a little late, but um, I think this is an important conversation to have, and we're going to continue having this conversation until we get justice and accountability for our loved ones on not some levels, but all levels. Also, want to get a shout out to Leia Shank of Impact, y'all. Leia Shank. Come on, man. Let's get it. She's doing the work with me. So what we're going to do with this panel is, because it's a, it's a lot of us on there, what we're going to do is we're going to humanize our loved ones. I've, I've always said, if we don't tell our loved ones' stories, to humanize our loved ones, who will? The media being some of the most powerful entities on earth, according to Malcolm X, because they have the power to make the innocent look guilty and the guilty look innocent. We're going to tell our own stories. We're going to tell y'all about our babies, because we don't want the news media and, and the newspapers and all that telling our loved ones' stories when we could, when we could humanize and tell, tell our own stories. We don't anybody else to tell our stories. So that's one thing we're gonna do. The second thing we're gonna do is let you guys know how we turned our pain to purpose, pain to power, pain to passion, because you know, passion without direction is chaos, and passion with direction is purpose. And these families have turned their passion to direction, and that's why the panel is from pain to purpose. And um, I wanna be uh, very clear that, you know, this is hard for us, impacted families doing this. This is very hard. You know, I wouldn't wish these shoes on my worst enemy. And we're not just out up here talking about uh, police brutality and police violence. There's mothers up here that lost their children to community violence. There's mothers up here that lost their children to substance abuse, drug-induced homicides. It don't matter how they lost a child, they lost a child. It's a club nobody wants to be a part of. These parents should not be burying their children. At all, this is this is like the worst panel ever to be on. And there's no name for a mother who loses their child. There's a name for a person who uh, lose their wife or husband. They say they widowed, but there's no name for a mother who has to lose their child because it's not normal. So the work we do, it's not popular. Activism ain't sexy. It's not cool. Ain't nobody in the back like, hey, let's be like Stevante Clark and fight for Jet. No. You know, the, the, the music and the social media and, and the podcast is what everybody focused on. But when it comes down to it, you know, if we're silent about this, we're desensitized about this, we're just as compliant with what's going on, th on out there. Our silence is compliance. If you got 1,300 good cops and 12 bad cops and those 1,300 good cops don't say anything about the 12 bad cops, you got 1,312 bad cops. That goes the same for the community. If you got 1,300 good community members and 12 bad community members, and those 1,300 good community members, I know them 12, bail them 12 bad community members, then we all gotta get it together as a community. The village is failing, miserably, miserably. So we got a lot of work to do. I'm gonna start with introducing the mothers. I'm gonna let the mothers introduce themselves and their, ch and their children. I have a relationship with each and every single mother that's dear and personal. I ain't gonna talk about it because it's a non-traditional foundation we have within I Am SAC, but we all for justice and accountability on not just some levels, but all levels. So um, Sister Latanya right here, I'm gonna let Sister Latanya speak first. Can y'all see Sister Latanya behind me? Right here, y'all see her? She got the fancy hat on. That is the fanciest hat. <laughs> I love it, come on. That's, her son, Marshall Miles, on there. So I'm gonna let Sister LaTanya take the mic first and we're gonna go down the road, you guys. And we're gonna um, name our loved ones and then humanize our loved ones. Tell them a little bit about our loved ones. And um, some of the families are new up here that, that haven't done this before. So Mama Jenny and, and Mama Deborah and, and all the other mothers, let's try to work with these mothers up here, let, you know, as it's their first time doing this. You see what I'm saying? And like I said, you know, this is a club nobody wants to be a part of. Me and Leah doing this work every day. Uh, Dr. Porter been supporting us. And um, we want to make sure that we come every year to tell our stories because our stories need to be heard. So, Sister Latanya, I'm going to pass the mic to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, y'all make some noise for Sister Latanya. Come on now. This is hard. And her son name is Marshall Miles. So we're gonna say the name Marshall Miles real quick because we like to say their names. The name is Marshall Miles. When I say say his name, y'all say Marshall Miles. Say his name. Marshall Miles. Say his name. Marshall Miles. Say his name. Marshall Miles. Hi, my name is Latanya Andrews. My son, Marshall Miles, was murdered at the Sac County Jail. They um. 
was uh, it was um, October twenty eighth, which is his birthday. They suffocated him. He kept telling him he couldn't breathe. They all ran on top of him. Wouldn't let him get no air and and so this was in two thousand eight October. I'm very saddened. I'm I'm trying to uh, cope with this every day, and it's very hard, very hard. So I need God in my life prayer. The name Marshall Miles, y'all say his name. Say his name. Say his name. So, these speakers. Okay. So, Marshall Miles was assassinated at the Sacramento County Jail, October 2018, the same year my brother was killed. Uh, also, Mama Anita couldn't be here. Her son was Antonio Thomas, who also died in that county jail. These are concentration camps. I don't even call them county jails. These jails, these concentration camps, have killed more people than they rehabilitated. If they ain't killed them physically, spiritually, emotionally, they don't do a good job at what they're doing in there. So just like we holding these cops accountable out on the streets, those people, those correction officers, those guards, those, those sheriffs that's running those county jails need to be held accountable just as much as we're doing this work out here on the street, you guys. Because Marshall Miles should be alive today. Sister Latayan should not be here. Uh, uh, Sister Anita, who couldn't make it, could not be here as well. And her son as well, uh, Antonio Thomas, uh, died as well in that Sacramento County Jail. So we're going to say the name Marshall Miles one more time. Say his name. Miles. Say his name. The next sister um, we got speaking, my sister Diamond, she is the daughter of my brother Sharano Stingley, who, who passed away. He's a martyr, a prophet, inshallah, now. He, he's, he, he's no longer here with us today, but his family is carrying on the legacy. So my sister Diamond, you know, um, is, 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 is continuing to fight for her father, and she's going to tell you a little bit about her story, um, her father's story. And this is why mental health should not be a crime. Mental health is not a crime. Everybody go through some mental health stuff. I went through my mental health crisis, and, 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 and thank God I'm able to make it because it, is it, is it looks like in the streets in the community, if you got mental health crisis, you could be shot dead with, with no accountability, no justice, no nothing, no help, no treatment, no actionable items, no nothing. So our actionable item is giving the family a platform. So we're going to give our uh, uninvited attention to our, our sister Diamond, and we're going to say the name Sharano Stingley, okay, you guys? After I say say his name, you guys say the name Sharano Stingley. Say his name. Stingley. Say his name. Stingley. Say his name. Stingley. Come on, sister Diamond. We're going to come back to Sister Diamond. We're going to come back to you, Diamond. And this is all fresh. It's all hard for us, y'all. You know, this is all fresh. It's hard. So we're going to say the name Sharano Stingley again, you guys. Say his name. Sharano say his name. Sharano and that's why we got some of these mothers up here to wrap their love around them. Now, the next mama we got, and, and, and what happened to Sharano Stingley was he had a mental health crisis. He went to the wrong house, and cops killed him, assassinated him. He was trying to go to his daughter's house. He's trying to go home. She out here fighting for his legacy. And, you know, and, and, and just as much as this affects the parents, uh, these, these injustices also affect the children just as hard. And um, she deserves to have her father with her today. So we're going to say the name Sharano Stingley one more time. Say his name. Sharano Stingley. Say his name. Sharano Stingley. Say his name. Sharano Stingley. The next mother we have is, has been a part of our movement for some time now. I remember when um, her daughter passed away, she was one. A lot of people are loud when it comes to the police violence. They're loud when it comes to um, when the police kill loved them. But a lot of people get quiet when it comes to the community violence. Really quiet, really, really quiet. And this mother said, you know what, I'm not going to be quiet. 
I'm gonna go door to door. I'm gonna go to store to store. I'm gonna go to apartment to apartment, car to car. I'm gonna make sure I get some type of justice and accountability for my baby. And not only did she continue to fight um, on behalf of other mothers, she started her own nonprofit. She's doing the work alongside with a lot of the mothers. And we're just so happy to have her a part of this uh, a panel discussion because she is literally a walking um, um, uh, a walking uh, 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 example of turning your pain to purpose. So I, I'm so um, I'm glad to have Mama Jenny here because her daughter should be alive today, Saray J. Redmond. She was only a, 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 a baby, you know, and like Stefan. Stefan was only a baby, you know. He had his whole life ahead of him. Saray J. Redmond did as well. So Soraya J should be alive today. And we're going to commemorate the life and legacy of Soraya J just like we just did for Marsha Miles, just like we did for Sharano Stingley. So we're going to say the name Soraya J, Soraya J Redmond. And after I say, say their names, just repeat after me. Uh, Soraya J Redmond. Say your name. Say your name. Say your name. Mama Jenny. Hi, I am Mama Jenny, as the Clark family has named me. My daughter was Soraya Jade Redmond, who was 19 when she was murdered in South Dakota, September 25th, 2019. Soraya was just visiting a friend's apartment, as she would always do, watching a movie when shots were fired into this apartment. My daughter lost her life, and everyone else that was in the apartment have kept silent and did my daughter no justice. So for months, six months, every Friday, we went out into the community and we named Friday, Reyes Friday. We took an hour of our time. And as Stavante said, we went door to door, car to car, tree to tree, corner to corner, store to store. We put up flyers and we, we talked about Soraya and we made sure people knew who she was and what happened because a lot of times people in the neighborhood, they either turned their head the other way or they did not know what happened. So, Stavante, Sequita, and Mama just did not let me go to a dark place. They made sure I still kept fighting. So I started a nonprofit for my daughter to do everything that meant something to my daughter. You know, when we have homeless people not welcome into an establishment because it's cold or they want something to eat and they're asked and told to leave, that doesn't happen with me. I'll buy them food, let them sit in there because they are a paying customer because that is what my daughter would have done and has done. So everything I do is for my daughter. Everything I do is for all the voiceless children that we have lost. I don't want to see any more mothers up here with me. I don't want anyone to know this pain. So everything I do is for Soraya, because I am Soraya. We're going we're gonna to say her name, Soraya J. Soraya J. Redmond, y'all ready? Say her name. Soraya say her name. Soraya. 19 years old, watching a movie, shot dead in the apartment. 19 years old, watching a movie. Marsha Miles, I can't breathe. The same words we heard from Eric Garner, the same words we heard from George Floyd, Sharon O. Stingley. Mental health is not a crime. We, we heard about Miles Hall. Her, her, his mama, Tan Hall, fights for this, exactly. A club nobody wants to be a part of. The next mother we got, she doing the hard work, and I've always said, you know, activism ain't sexy, but music is. And music, these artists, they bring people together in ways I believe activism do not. And that's why, you know, DJ Geo left such an impact in our community. <coughs> DJ Geo should be alive today, just like Soraya J. Redman should be alive today just like Sharano Stingley should be alive today, just like Marshall Miles should be alive today, just like Stefan Clark should be alive today. DJ Geo meant something. He was viciously gunned down, but what had happened after DJ Geo's death, his mother 
not only uh, fights for his life and legacy, but what she does is she supports other families that have been impacted. And that's some of the work that I love to see with some of these mothers because, you know, one thing is just losing a child, but another thing is trying to prevent what happened to your child to happen to anybody else's child. That's the hard work. And, and, and Mama uh, Anita, she does that consistently, consecutively. And I'm, I'm happy to know her. Um, I'm honored to know her. Um, her son couldn't be here today, but he, he's my guy because um, uh, he got to go to work. But uh, he also uh, is a good person. I wanted him to be here so he could sit up with his mother so people could see that the brothers and the siblings matter as well. Not just the mothers are affected, not just the fathers are affected and the children, but their siblings. They had siblings. And um, DJ Gio's family fights for him on a higher level, and I'm just so happy to have them. And Sister Leia works with uh, Anita uh, closely as well. Anita does a lot of court support. She does a lot of stuff within this movement that a lot of mothers don't have to do, but, but they do. Um, so her son name was DJ Gio. We're going to say the name DJ Gio, you guys. Um, and after me, we just repeat. I'm gonna say say his name, and then you guys say DJ Gio. Say his name. DJ Gio. Say his name. DJ Gio. Say his name. DJ Gio. Mama Anita, you wanna take the mic? Hi. Good afternoon. So great to see you. My son Giovanni Pisano, better known as DJ Gio, started DJing when he was about 11 years old. He started DJing because I could no longer afford daycare. He was walking down the mall. He saw this record store that was giving out DJ lessons, and he said, Mom, I want to do DJ lessons. And I said, okay, well, how much? He said, it's $134. Well, compared to the $834 that I was paying for daycare, I said, yes. And he wouldn't be walking the mall? I said, yes, let's do it. He started DJing a few weeks. Uh, he started training. A few weeks later, he comes back, and he says, says Mom, says, I want to be a DJ. I need for you to help me get my equipment. And I said, son, that equipment has probably cost a lot of money, and we don't have that kind of money. He says, but you have, you have credit cards, don't you? And so $2,200 later, $2, later after leaving Guitar Center with his equipment, he started doing, he started doing house parties. He started doing school parties. And when he asked for me to help him buy his turntables, he said, Mom, I'm going to pay you back because I'm going to be doing house parties and school parties. And he did. He went on to be, to work with various artists. Um, he went on to do major events. He played at events of over 100,000 people. He worked with major artists like uh, he opened for Chris Brown when Chris Brown came to Sacramento. He uh, worked with, uh, I'm sorry, not Chris Brown, but Bruno Marx. He worked with uh, Chris Brown and then also the, um, the young kid that uh, is on Empire, Isha Cole. He worked with several artists. He toured. He went to places that I can only dream of. One of his Twitter sayings is, when I die, look for my camera roll. I had a great life. And he did. He traveled, sometimes he'd go to, uh, one time I called him and I said, son, I said, let's go out to dinner. And he said, mom, I'm in the Dominican Republic. And I'd be like, wow. My son was amazing. I miss my son every single day. He was my son. He was my moon. He was my friend, my confidant, once he turned into an adult, when we went through all the trials, he was my friend, my confidant. He was my supporter. He was my sword and shield. Everything that I ever wanted to do or be was for my son. Now my son is gone. One of the things that he wanted to do when the crime during the pandemic started increasing was to be able to provide youth or help youth with DJ lessons. He thought that, he reflected a lot and he, th he thought that because he was able to find DJing as a, um, a purpose, he was able to keep away from streets and keep away from gangs or guns. And he wanted to do the same for 
for the youth and for young adults. We were going to start that in 2023. However, he didn't make it to 2023. He was robbed and gunned down in front of his house in North Natomas, a neighborhood that he moved us into because he said we were going to be safer there. And that's why my son went to that. He was killed by people with no scruples, by people that have no conscience about pulling a gun and killing somebody, by people that could not earn what my son had so hard worked for. And the hardest thing, what I live with every day, is the memory of seeing my son dying on the street. There's not much that I can do, or there's nothing I can do for my son anymore. Nothing is going to bring my son back. I miss him. I cry for him still every day. It's hard for me to watch videos of him because I have to pretend that he's out touring somewhere and that he's going to come home. This is a club that nobody wants to be in as we've said before. Gio is no longer here. All these children are no longer here. I am my voice for Gio, but I'm also the voice for all these other children that are not here with us anymore. This is not somewhere that I wanted to be in. It's somewhere where I've been pushed to be. And because my pain is so deep and so hard, I can no I, I don't want anybody else to be feeling this way. I don't want anybody else to, to hurt or be crying or, or to not see their children fulfill their future. I would hope that everyone would join in this fight because we can't do it alone. I can't do it alone. Devante can't do it alone. And not that I'm comparing myself or Stevante, or anyone at this table, to Martin Luther King. But Martin Luther King, he spoke of justice, and he spoke enough about it that he created a movement, a movement that turned into a culture. We have that same opportunity. If we join forces, we can stop some of the senseless killing that's going on, that's obliterating our, our children, and that's leaving devastated families behind. Thank you. Thank you. We're going to say the name DJ Gio. Let's say the name DJ Gio. Say his name. DJ Gio. Say his name. DJ Gio. Say his name. DJ Gio. After they assassinated the brother in his driveway, they, they took his jewelry. After they killed my big brother, Demarcus McKinney, in 2006, my older brother, who was buried under my younger brother, Stefan Clark, they took his phone, they took... Some of his watches, they took his stuff. What, you know, these people, there's something else, I'll tell you. That's why just as loud as we are with this police violence, we got to be just as loud with the community violence. You should not be killing your brother. Um, say the name. They're going to say DJ Gio one more time. Say his name. DJ Gio. And, 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 um, the black folk, we 14, they say we 14% of the population, 28% killed by law enforcement, disproportionately killed higher than anybody else. Our Mexican brothers and sisters are right there killed higher than anybody else when it comes to police too. So just like we get assassinated on a higher level. So, so we got to make sure that we uh, wrap our love and support around Mama Anita because what she's doing right now, she got a program where they're turning young children into DJs because that's what DJ Gio was doing. And her son it was mentioned at Coachella and everything. So we love you and thank you for the work you're doing. Sister Diamond, you ready to speak? You good? You think you do it? No, we're going we're gonna to let Sister Diamond say some words, y'all. Um, like I said, it's hard for everybody. Don't nobody, she shouldn't even be have to be up here. But she is, unfortunately, because of the Sacramento Sheriff's Department. It's so hard for me to be up here not cussing you guys because we're in the church. So I'm going to let y'all know that I done cuss, almost cussed like seven times up here. But I stopped myself because Dr. Porter is a pastor and this is a church. So I didn't cuss in here. <coughs> but, um, but what happened to her daddy pisses me the hell off. I could say that, right? 
I can say piss the hell off. No, no. Okay. <laughs> All right. Too late, huh? <laughs> um, I'm Diamond Stingley, daughter of Shalano Stingley. you ever sat and then think about how you should have treated somebody when they were alive? I was very close to my dad, but I had my ups and downs of me trying to be grown. Feeling that he was in my house so I can talk to him how I want or you know, disagree with him because I'm grown now and I'm not a kid when he used to disagree with me and I feel like I was right. <coughs> so on December 5th, we had an argument. <laughs> I argued with him and I was saying with some things. But we do that a lot, so I didn't think of anything. But I said some things, and then the next day when he was coming home, he was killed by Sacramento Shepherd. I didn't know a lot about mental health, but now that I sit and think about it, I feel like I should have helped him more. I feel like it was my fault. We argued, and I feel like if we would have never argued, he would have never been in a predicament to even be outside or anything. <sighs> People don't understand what I feel like. I <sighs> so the early December, six, five o'clock. My father was on his way back home to where we live, and he went to wrong house because all the houses look alike, and he was knocking at the door, which is not a crime, you know, think, talking to the door, <coughs> telling them, like, I'm at home, I mean, open the door, I'm here, and the person called the police on my dad, and the police came, well, it's not what we think it is, because they have it set somewhere else, but I have the real video, the 48 minutes, not the five-minute clip, that they were already on the street. So they already seen my dad walk to that house. They were already on the street looking for somebody else, but see my dad, let him go to the door. Then when the man called the police, <laughs> attacked him. They beat my dad. They suffocated him to death as he was calling my name. And I feel so bad because I came, but I came too late. And I do this every day where I play in my head that I saved him, but I didn't. Or I, I seem to think that maybe he forgave me about our argument because he was calling for me before he died. That was his last words was my name but it seems it's not making me feel any better because I don't have no daddy no more. <laughs> I don't know what to do. <laughs> but kids be talking about him, and I just get so mad because I just don't know what to do. It's like if we're in the streets and somebody mess with your family, you handle it, but I can't handle the police. <laughs> what am I going to do? <laughs> Then they send me pictures of him, all time see pictures. What kind of stuff is that? I really want to see the pictures, but who wants to see their parent cut up? <laughs> but I debated to look at him because I want to be his voice. I want to be strong. I want to be able to see them things. 
I have to because nobody else is here. I'm the only one here for my dad. I feel like everybody else moved on and I'm just sitting there. I feel so bad. I wish I would have never argued with him. I just miss him so much. I just wish I could have treated him better or something. Lord knows I just miss him. It's hard for me, though. People don't understand. But I'm just here to tell my story. I'm just here to let them know what they did to my dad, what he didn't deserve. People don't sit and study the video. I study it. I study it like nobody else. He was, he told the police, like, okay, I'm in cuffs. No matter what, if he was, they feel like he was doing this and he was doing that. But as a human being, if somebody's hurting you on top of you or pinching you, but they don't want you to know, you're going to scream. You're going to squirm, squirm. You're going to do stuff because you're a human being. You have reflexes. So, you know, the police cover it up, say, oh, he was moving. But people don't know what I see. I see a bunch of scars and scratches on him. So the video just shows him moving a lot. But that doesn't mean to kill him. And that's what I have to deal with. I have to go outside, hear the police on my street, and go out there to witness my dad getting his chest pumped, witness not being able to see him for two days, them lying to us, telling us that he was alive. That video shows that he was dead. I had the full 48 minutes where they was pumping his chest for 30 minutes. How is he alive? They want to tell us that he was. <laughs> I just don't understand why they took him to the hospital and let us deal with that to let me deal with that. I just want to know why I couldn't spend a night with him. I, I, I sometimes get jealous when people be having funerals and stuff like that. I had to cremate my dad. I didn't get to see him. I didn't, I had to do everything by myself. <sighs> Just dealing with it by myself. My mom, I love her. She, I love her, but she don't, <sighs> she don't express it. Like, when I bring him up, she can't handle crying with me like this. I can't talk to her about this stuff. Nobody sees the things that my lawyer sends me when I have to view this stuff. I have to do everything by myself. Nobody don't want to see that. They don't want to see that. I understand you don't want to see that, but I have to see it because I have to advocate for him. Who's going to advocate for him? I can't go talk to my mom about these pictures I want to see so bad. I have to see them because I have to explain how much this is going to ruin me to see some autopsy pictures. Toronto Stingers. Name, y'all. Say his name. Sharano Stingley. Say his name. Say his name. Say his name. And this is a prime example of why we need these mothers and family members to come together. Because she said she ain't got nobody to talk to. She said she ain't, I ain't got nobody to talk to. And I feel like I was part of it. That's why she need impacted families to talk to. That's why it's important that we keep these people together. Law enforcement is the largest, most funded gang in American history, period. I, I tell kids all the time, they come to me and I tell them, you want to get away with murder, don't, don't join the Bloods, don't join the Crips, go ahead and apply for Sacramento Police Department. That's the message, it seems. And 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 the, and the sheriff uh, 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 is a black man, Jim Cooper. And all skin folk ain't kin folk. You may be my color, but you ain't my kind. And we ain't anti nobody. I I ain't I ain't because you know they they mix my word and say he taking shots. I ain't taking no shots. True leaders hold accountability and delegate responsibility. That's why my problem is with Stephon Clark. Anytime you don't know the difference between a gun and a cell phone, you should be held accountable. You shouldn't even have the badge if you don't know the difference between a gun and a cell phone. Anytime you do something so bad where a law must be created, you should be held accountable. Sharano Stingley should be alive today. The next person person speaking, and y'all might know her, everybody know her, my grandmama. Um, my grandmother is uh, uh, 
my number two besides Leia. Leia and Grandma, those are my road dogs. Um, everywhere I go, they don't want me there. They want Grandma there. They like we leave Stevante at home. Leave him at the crazy house or wherever he be at. We'll take Grandma. They don't want no parts of me. Sacramento's most hated. And this Sacramento's most favorite, you know. And um, I get why y'all don't like me and love Grandma. I'm not here to be liked, you know. I don't. I, I'm not here for y'all. Fake. I was about to cuss again. <laughs> Anyways, I'm gonna get to introduce a grandma before I go on my rant, and y'all get mad at me for cussing everybody out at the church. But you know, sometimes people need to be held accountable. And um, my grandmother, when my brother was assassinated in her backyard, she was uh, uh, five feet away from where they shot through. Uh, that backyard. My grandmother and my little sister was there. She had to duck and crawl over my little sister and, and protect my little sister who could have easily been killed as well. Um, my grandmother has started the Blessed Child Neighborhood Association after the death of my brother. They've implemented speed bumps, done all types of stuff, uh, block parties my grandma's done, all giveaways. She does a lot of things. Um, but at the same time, my grandmother shouldn't be on this panel either. The reason my grandmother is on this panel is because my brother was assassinated in her backyard. Um, across here, you guys see a school. And there's a playground there that's called the Stephon Clark Playground at the Stephon Clark College Preparatory Middle School right across the street. June 13th, those babies will be graduating. Hello. And from that playground, you can actually see the backyard where my brother was killed, literally. From the playground built in Stephon's name in honor of my brother, you could see the actual house in the backyard where my brother was assassinated unjustly by um, the largest and most funded gang in American history. Um, and we're not anti-law enforcement. We're anti-police brutality. We're anti-police terrorism. We're anti-killer cops. We're anti-getting shot 20 times in grandma's backyard. If you parked in a handicapped spot, you should be held accountable. What that looks like, I don't know. Hopefully you're not killed by the police. But when it comes to the, the, this, and it, we, that's, that's the same for the community violence, too. If you're out there terrorizing our street, we anti yo 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 behind, too. I can't say. <laughs> so, Grandma, um, I want you to tell a little bit about Stefan, a little bit, just humanize him a little bit, introduce yourself. Um, I'm Sequina Thompson, the grandmother of Steph, of little Papa. We call him little Papa. I call him little Papa because my husband was Papa, and then we got little Papa. But that day, it was Sunday. Me, Grandpa, Papa, we all came from church. The little Papa was upstairs with his Uncle Curtis. And me, Kaylin, and Papa came on the um, paratransit. So when we came home, his brother, uh, Papa's brother came over, Horace, his Uncle Horace. They was all out in the garage. So Papa was upstairs because they were doing some um, DJ um, music upstairs with his uncle. And so I started cooking dinner with changed clothes, and Kaylin was on the play, on the, she was watching the TV, and she was doing that YouTube because Kaylin likes to dance, do praise dancing. So I started cooking barbecue because little Papa and uh, they love um, barbecue chicken and stuff. I was cooking Sunday dinner, and so Kaylin started. Um, Kaylin started. Um, she did a praise dance and it was take me, take me to the king. <laughs> and when she did it, I started crying, <laughs> and I said, "Kaylin, oh, that is so beautiful." I said, "Go get your brother and get your uncle and let them come down and see it and watch. They're gonna cry too." So Uncle Curtis, he was doing something. He couldn't came. In. Little Papa came down. I said, Papa, little Papa, you're going to start crying because look what your sister just made up this dance to take me to the king. So she started dancing, and Papa picked her up, and he started crying. I said, I told you you was going to cry. And so then after that, he said, Grandma, I'll be right back. I'm going with my friends. And he went in the garage with Papa and them to tell Papa and them about Papa. And Horace in the car when his parents picked him up. 
And he said, but don't worry, Grandma. I'll be back, especially for that dinner. And so and he loved my cornbread, too. But he liked barbecue chicken. So he never came back. He never came back. All I know is I heard some gunshots, and Caitlin was on the couch asleep. And I kept hearing shooting, and, and I said, Papa, somebody must be shooting. I'm talking to my husband, and he's in the bed, and he can't get up. And we just thought it was the um, call Gables. That's what we assumed. But then they started getting closer to the house. So I grabbed Kaylin off the couch. I kind of like dragged her off of it. <laughs> and we got on the floor and said, Kaylin, they shooting, they shooting. Kaylin, stay down. So we crawled, instead of crawling through the kitchen, we crawled through that living room and went down there where, where Papa was up in the bed. But we, we called right there in the hallway, and we didn't get up. And I said, Papa, I don't know what happened. He said, I think I heard, heard little Papa. I said, huh? And then he, but this was afterwards, after everything had happened. And then they told me, don't go in the backyard. Don't go open your windows and bunny them. Everybody kept calling the house, said there's um, them things out in front that you can't go move or something. And. My, nobody could come up to the house. My grandson couldn't. My son couldn't. Nobody could come up to the house. I was scared. I was really scared. So I told the police come finally send somebody in, this lady police, and tell us that that somebody had been shot, but they didn't let say in our backyard. And this the first words I said. I said, y'all better not shot nothing when my uh, grandson because everybody comes to the backyard, even he comes. That's my godson. Everybody comes to the, and there's no fence. There's no gate on either side. You can just walk all the way back. That's why they didn't have to shoot him. They could have put a, had a dog. They could have sent a dog. They could have just tagged him. Because there's nothing, everything's open. It's nothing you can, it's not no high heat. They cannot be afraid for their life when there's no fence. The, the, the fence was broken down, and on the other side, it was broken down. So how can you say that my grandson, that you could not just have a dog go get him? And then finally, and I said, God, I never wish I never had my grandkids go in the back. I've been blaming, blaming me. I've been seeing a psychiatrist or therapist. I thought it was a nightmare. I People don't know that me as a grandmother, that's my daughter's child in my backyard. And me and Papa, Papa said he thought he heard him. And when we was there, when I was there, it was like, I, I have to see one because I think this is a dream. This is not real. You know, you feel like it's not real. It's not really. It's just like a dream, a real bad dream. And day by day, but now I'm getting better as through therapy because I do have to have therapy. But God is the one that got me through. He, God, is the number one in my life, and I just thank God that I have all my other grandsons. And and then after I lost my husband two years, two years ago, my great granddaughter name is after Tommy. After when my husband was Tommy. I'm Tommy Lee Thompson. Her name is Jalay Lovely. Top, I mean Clark. So I got God bought in my life. The day when my husband died, the next day my great granddaughter was born on Valentine's Day. So I thank God. He bought he bought my grandbabies, my great grandbabies. So and all of them. And even with Demarcus, I got a great granddaughter. And she's 18 now. So I don't get to see her, but God's going to let me see her one day. I know he will. So I just pray for all, everybody's mother because we, we, when we wake up, we don't know if this is real to us because this happened. You know, I won't want nobody have this kind of, had to go through this. Never. Nobody. It's too much. It's too much. That's all I got to say. Thank you, guys. Oh, we're going to say the name, Stefan Clark, my grandmother. Um, say his name. Stephon Clark. Say his name. Stephon Clark. 
Say his name. And it's been six years. They People remind me all the time. And um, it's still fresh for me. It still feels like Stefan was yesterday, you guys. Not a day go by, I don't say my brother's name. Not a day go by, I don't. People always ask me, what do you, I work for Stefan Clark. I'm the communications director for Stefan Clark. So if you don't like the communications, you got to take it up to the boss. But the work we do, you know, in honor of Stefan Clark is, 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 this is our life's work. Well, this is, th you know, this is family that we, we together for life because we impact it. We know which others go through. This is, this is family. And that's why we say it's a movement, not a moment. Because a lot of people could talk and say, oh, we're sorry, and your condolences and all that. But it, it don't bring our loved ones back. You know, it don't bring Stefan back. You know, my grandma been going through the same thing, just like I've been going through the same thing. Uh, year after year, there's probably not a day go by where she doesn't say Stefan's name in some capacity as well. So, you know, this hurts. You know, this really, really hurts. But um, we're going to keep going. And um, th our next mother is the, uh, the mother of uh, a brother who was a community leader, who was out there doing the work, working with youth, working in the schools. His name was Greg Najee Grimes. And we have uh, the, the mother of uh, Gregory Grimes here and, and the father right there. Can you raise your hand, brother, right there? Come on now, make some noise for the father. Family, the family, the family of Greg Najee Grimes. Because the family that prays together, you know, you might kill our loved ones, but you're not going to break up our families. You're not going to kill our families. And, 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 and the, this family, the family of Greg Najee Grimes, they, they, they with the work. They doing the work out there. They teaching you how to recover from a gunshot wound if you get shot. If you get shot, don't call the EMTs. You call Mama, Mama, <laughs> Mama Deva right here. She'll fix you up quicker than they would. She'll make sure you live to see another day. Now, we don't know about the mother folks. <laughs> but, but, but she teach. That's the kind of hard work we talk about. You know what I mean? Because Greg Najee Grimes probably could have made it if, she, if they, somebody would have went to her class and learned how to treat these gunshot wounds. Well, she shouldn't even be doing this, honestly. The mother shouldn't be doing this. You know, but if 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 but the way I, the way the reason I love her and Anita and Grandma and everybody else is if, if we don't do it, damn, I mean, dang it, who will? They almost got me, sisters. They almost got me. But dang it, if we don't do it, who will? And we are doing the work, and 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 I, and like, it's hard, but it's necessary. It's necessary. Greg Najee Grimes. Was 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 a you know I'm trying not to say what happened to everybody because I want everybody to explain what happened, but Greg Najee Grimes was a pillar in our community. Um, he he was love and light everywhere he went, just like DJ Gio. Love and light everywhere they went. Everywhere I went, they see me. And back in the day, I was crazy, crazy. I was canceled. They said they said I was canceled. But uh, and uh, DJ Gio and and Greg Najee Grimes, every time they see me, they were like, "Oh, what's up, bro? Stephon Clark, brother. We love you, brother. You know." And to see their mothers going through, and they looked out for everybody. Y'all had two of the nicest sons ever alive. Looked out for everybody, was there. That's why it hurts to see them at this panel. It hurts so much. And, and they were friends. Yes. Divine intervention, right? But let's not let their deaths be in vain. Let's make sure we, we get this community violence figured out. Too many neighborhoods, not enough neighbors, correct? We gotta get back to the unity in the community. So I'm gonna let Mama Deborah take the mic and I um, want her to talk about, and I love the survivor's pen. And she yes. also works with Moms Demand Action. She's doing a lot of work. You're doing a lot of work, sister. Come on now. That's right. We're gonna say Greg, Greg Najee Grimes' name one time before, before you start. So everybody, um, I'm gonna say, say his name and then Greg Najee Grimes. Uh, say his name. Greg Najee Grimes. Say his name. Greg Najee Grimes. Say his name. Greg Najee Grimes. Come on. Thank you so very much. So, I'm Najee's mom, um, also known as Deborah Grimes. And I can tell you that um, as honored as I am to be here, I'm so sad to be here, my husband and I. Our lived experiences since 4th of July, 2022, I could probably write a bestseller. 
but what we're doing right now is is chapter by chapter doing what we're talking about here bridging the the pain to purpose so our son was our only child that was it he was everything he was just sunshine from day one a three pounder a preemie who we just cradled and just wow we took him on as many adventures as we possibly could we wanted him to be well-rounded um, the lessons that we taught him stuck um, he never went through the terrible twos never had a spanking he was just um, as close to perfect as could be and he did a lot of goodwill in the community so yes he was definitely out there marching for your brother most definitely i was looking at some pictures the other night he was definitely very good friends the best of friends with dj geo they had a whole group none of those guys were ever in trouble they were they were giving to the community he worked uh, for the Roberts Family Development Center for a few years. He had um, gone to Boise State University. He was the first student, first student athlete at his high school, Intercom, to actually get a, a, a scholarship, a D1 scholarship. He went there. Uh, one of the classes that he had in his capstone was traumatized children. So that's when he started thinking about we have to really do stuff to really help the children in the community. Once he graduated, came back with his five championship rings from Boise State, um, he started working for Roberts Family Development Center, and then he started teaching at Intercom High School, the same school that he had graduated from. He started teaching special education, and he started coaching football, the D-line. So now we had a whole group of young men who he was mentoring and just pouring so much into. One of the things that, um, that he talked about often was 212, the philosophy of 212. 212 is the, the um, scientific level for um, the boiling point. So 212, that's your hottest hot. That's, your, that's where you really get it popping. That's your, you know, that. <laughs> so it was a campaign that they had done at Boise. So he brought that back and applied it to all aspects of his life. And he wanted to turn up and do well. Um, he was excellent. He bought a home, was just uh, closing on that home. And it was right near us, uh, my husband and I. He was, you know, really um, extremely close to us, so he wanted to be in our neighborhood. Um, he enrolled his son in kindergarten. He was four years old, ace. And it was just two minutes from the front door. And everything was everything. He paid off all his debt. He was good to go. Um, Fourth of July that time came and that was the most horrific time of our lives I can definitely tell you that um, I, I don't want to I don't want to belabor that right now because uh, I'll, I'll, end, I'll, I'll be on the floor kicking and screaming so um, but I will tell you this that um, we huddled our community together after that, the song that was the only song that was sang at his service was Take Me to the King. That was the song. And he had 31 pallbearers uh, from the NFL through his uh, high school teammates to his friends, his day ones, his cousins. 31 because he was 31 years old. The following month, my husband and I established the Greg Naji Grimes 212, 212 Anchor Foundation. We wear anchors on everything. Anchors on my fingernails, anchors 
everywhere. Um, because our son had an anchor when he went to Boise State. He had a new tattoo, and it was an anchor down his arm, and it said, Mom and Dad, at the bottom. And we were like, whoa, this is great. So we started collecting anchors. Um, we had been doing so for years. He collected them we, wherever we went, everywhere. anchors were everywhere, in our home and in his home. So it's the Greg Najee Grimes 212 Anchor Foundation. And from there, as Mr. Clark was saying, we got busy. Within one month, we started working with the same trauma team who had worked to try and save our son from UC Davis, the same trauma team to do Stop the Bleed training, because what we realize is that in many instances, the first responders are really community first responders. They're the first ones there. What are we waiting for? Don't just stand there. Do something. So we want people to be empowered to understand how you can impact that life, how you can save a life. We do um, gun lock. Uh, we work with the police department to do gun lock giveaways because if you're going to own a gun, keep it safe. We do gun lock giveaways. We do um, uh, training with the, with the local schools for active shooter training. We do CPR training um, through Moms Demand Action. Um, I am the local lead. Uh, Jennifer and um, Anita are also uh, leads with Mom Demand Action as well. Uh, we're 10 million strong. We're nationwide. We do legislation all day, every day. We're at the Capitol all the time, talking to people, knocking on doors, advocating, fighting. We're doing the most. Last year, we had uh, 10 pieces of legislation that were passed, anti-gun violence um, legislation throughout the whole state. So we are busy. Um, through our foundation, so we partner all of that up. Through our foundation, we do um, scholarship giveaways. We have walk in my cleats. We give away scholarships, $2,500 scholarships to Come on now, we need some money. Come on yes, now, we Look, do. they do everything. We do um, as small as a giant scholarships, another $2,500 scholarships. Oh. We, I mean, we just, we, we pass them out. We do everything. We haven't asked for anything. We wanted to make sure that we were sewing into the community and that we didn't ask for the di a dime. The first time we ever asked for something was yesterday on the annual big day of giving. We asked for $3, $3 to help keep our stuff going. Uh, we do, we give away at uh, Thanksgiving, uh, turkey roasting, turkey roaster giveaway things, <laughs> a whole bunch of those. And then at Christmas time, which is our son's birthday, uh, we do, yeah, it's, it's super awesome. Uh, his nickname was Coach Geechee, so we do the Geechee tree giveaway. So the first year was 31 Christmas trees, Christmas trees and all the trimmings. Anita's there every year. Um, last year we did uh, 32 trees. This year we'll do 33 trees. So we'll just keep it going. Um, we keep bringing it. We do another event, and I'll just I'll, I'll keep it. I'll just tell you about two more things because we're, we're we're very okay, busy. Okay, because they they, they, they have to kick us out. So okay, okay. So just church. two more things. We do another event that's called um, um, Lifesavers Party. The whole Lifesavers Party, you were there, Mr. Clark. The whole Lifesavers Party is every aspect of that is about saving lives. Every, every vendor is about saving lives, whether it's mental health or what have you. And then the last thing I want to tell you guys about is that we're going to be doing a, um, an event uh, which is called a um, tailgate party. So it's also in honor of our, of our, um, our son. A tailgate party, and it's for survivors. Um, on Sunday, Sunday morning stroll, morning, M-O-U-R-N-I-N-G, is for Bereaved Mother's Day. We don't even celebrate that here in Sacramento, but we just brought it. Bereaved Mother's Day is always a week before Mother's Day. So it is this Sunday. We're doing a Sunday morning stroll. We're starting with the coffee, and then we're going to do a sound bath, and then we're doing wine 
and um, and dinner. So, I mean, we we're just trying everything that we can to turn the 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 pain to purpose, to passion, and to get busy, stay busy, and then let people know that we're addressing the the community trauma. In, in really meaningful and tangible ways. Come on now. Y'all make some noise for the Thank family you. of Greg Najee Grimes. We're going to say Greg Najee Grimes. Say his name. Say his name. Come on now. And, and Sister Deborah is doing so much work, and she got a dinner coming up. Everybody heard dinner, right? So so y'all make sure y'all hit her up for that bereaved mother Sunday, because I didn't even know that. Did y'all know that? There was a bereaved mother Sunday? I didn't know that. You know, you did? Okay, I didn't know that. So I'm, that's information that we know now, right? And because um, we do got we do it on some Mother's Day it's at Stefan's, if all y'all know, we do that every year. But um, Sister Deborah, she's doing so much work. I love you, sister. Now, this is a new, uh, uh, we got some new people here. Uh, sister Al Alize, right? And, and this is Sister Maya. Maya, right? Did I say it right? And she is here for Tasha. Sister Tasha Cousins could not be here. This is her COO. And Sister Tasha Cousins' son was murdered in Natomas in the middle between two schools in Natomas. His name was Kijan Starks. He was an inspiring artist. He should be alive today. This was his better half. He just died in February 2004, Kijan Starks. And um, this sister, along with the mother of Kijan, Sister Tasha, has been fighting tirelessly for the life and legacy of Kijan because they ain't found nobody yet. That Nobody's been arrested. No accountability. No justice. Every Thursday, this sister's out there. Every single Thursday, like Mama Jenny was out there every Friday, right? Every Thursday, she's out there with the mother of, 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 of Kijan Starks fighting for the life and legacy of her better half who should be alive today. So we're going to say the name Kijan Starks, and we're going to say it uh, like he should be alive today. Kijan Starks. Say his name. Kijan Say his name. Kijan And we're going to try to hurry up because we know got to get to y'all dinner and y'all gala. Everybody got dressed and pretty and nice. But we're going to try to make sure we get through all these families, and, and then we'll go. There you okay. go, sister. Um, I'll, like, summarize it up. So February 17th at 2.45 a.m., Kijan Starks was killed coming from an ex-girlfriend's house. Um, uh, he was found, well, I found him in his car, um, laid to the side. But at the crime scene, you know, I already just suspected, you know, there's no glass over here. I walk down the street. The glass is by... Um, the ex, where the ex-girlfriend lives. The glass is down the street over there. It's not by his car. You know, he's laid out in the car. Um, <sighs> yeah. Um, I feel like, you know, it's an easy case. And, of course, you know, Sac Sheriff doesn't want to do their job. They want others to do it. They'd rather us do it than themselves. But I just hope, you know, we get some accountability and everybody, everybody that knows gets held accountable, everybody. And in honor of Kijan Starks, his mother and I will be starting, she's starting um, a foundation called the Stable Blocks um, to help young adults um, gain success, their future, um, just help them out, you know, because and ages 16 to 25, just to make sure, you know, they have somebody, you know, we all need someone to lean on. So, yeah, I just want to make it short. And we're going to keep fighting and keep pushing for Kijan Starks, as I would if he was here today. He was a father. He was a friend. He was a son. And he's my best friend, <laughs> other half. So yeah, I'm gonna keep fighting for him and figuring out what happened to him to this day, still unknown. But um, yeah, that's it. We're gonna say his name, Kijan Stark. Say his name. Say his name. Say his name. And the next family we're gonna get to. I'm, I'm glad this brother here. This is my brother, and I hate that he have to be here because it's my brother. And um, I will run into King Tay always, and, and King Tay is kind of like uh, how Gio was and, and, and Greg Najee Grime was. Every time they see me, they see Stefan, they show me. Like, every time he see me, no matter if it was at the club, whether it was at anywhere, he see me. It has always been love. And when he had to join this club, nobody wants to be a part of it. broke my heart because his daughter was killed on Valentine's Day. And it was community violence. 
and and usually we do see the mothers come out for their their, their children. You know, it's hard for uh, a lot of the fathers and the men of the impacted families to come out and be heard. You know, there's not as many groups for the impacted fathers and men as well as there are for the mothers. And one thing I, I want to reach out, real, I reached out last minute to him, and I said, you know what, brother, we ain't got no brothers there commemorating life and legacy, and I want people to see what that looks like. So I want to bring King Tay here because Chastity Sparkman, his daughter, was also loved by the community. And I seen that love firsthand because on the day of the funeral, he invited me to the funeral. And, and, and he said, I want you here with the family. He said, I want you here with, the, with us. Walk in with us. Come with us. And I went there, and the family showed up, you know. And my, my brother got some kids. He got some kids on him, amen. <laughs> the Bible says be fruitful, <laughs> have many. <laughs> but, talking about me. <laughs> <laughs> but I love him so much. The family showed out and loved. The community loved his daughter. His baby should be alive today. The, the killers tried to run away. Yeah. They tried to go to New York. Got caught. And got caught in New York and, uh, and brought their behinds uh, extradited. Ain't that the word, Leah? Yep, extradited their behinds to justice. And, 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 and that's how it needs to be for all our babies. That's how it needs to be for Kijan Starks, too. We need to find whoever did that to him, and they need to be held accountable. Um, uh, King Tay, we're going to say the name Chastity Sparkman um, two times, three times, and then we're going to let our brother go, and then we got two more mothers, okay? Are y'all ready? Say her name. Chastity Sparkman. Say her name. Chastity Sparkman. Say her name. Chastity Sparkman. All right, now, Brother King Tay, tell us about her. Well, Chastity was, I was blessed with Chastity. July 17th, 1997. She was taken away on Valentine's Day, February 14th. So I would never look at that day the same. And what makes this tragedy so hard for me, it was like I can't put too much of the cases out there because it's an ongoing case. I would just say it was by someone that I, she was ambushed by someone that I favored and trusted and loved myself. And it, it's, it, it was hard, you know, it was hard. It was something unbelievable, and I still can't believe it because it's still fresh. So, you know, I had to be strong for my other kids. You know, I, everybody already know, yeah, I got 20 kids, so I got to be strong for the rest of them. But you, a man ain't supposed to cry, they say, but I should do a whole lot of crying alone when I'm at home. So yeah, so you gotta hold your loved ones close, close as you can. And when things ain't looking right, you gotta you gotta really pay attention to it. Cause you know she used Chassie was like my best friends. She thinks she's my baby, but she wasn't the baby. But she was daddy baby. She called me every day. You got you know you got that person or that kid that calls you don't want nothing, just bugging you, bugging you, just want to shoot you. She just called me, Dad. I just want to know what you're doing. I'm watching TV, Chas. Dad, what are you doing? I'm working, Chas. What you want? I don't want nothing. I just want to talk to my dad. And she was going to Sac City. She was just graduating for psychology and all that stuff like that. She was so proud, handling her business. Had two children, you know. And and when you when people fail to realize, you don't when you when you take someone's life, you are not taking one life. You you changing and destroying a whole lot of lives. Not only did you destroy her life, you you let, you, you destroyed her two children's lives. You destroyed your lives, and if you had a kid, you destroyed their life. Well, now they're not going to have it's, it's 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 more than one person involved. You know, everybody took a loss. You know, even if you pull the trigger, the people that love you, they hurting as well. They gonna lose you. You know, it's 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 it's, it's big. It's a bigger picture than people looking at themselves and how they feeling about situations. We need to stop and think and look around, because you hurt no you hurt. It's like you hurting the whole village. You know, like like. Brother said earlier, it takes a village, and we the village. If we don't do something to make a change, it's not going to never change. Everybody want to turn a blind, blind eye. Don't everybody want to say nothing. Everybody was like, man, but this feeling here, I done lost a lot of people in my life. I done lost sisters, brothers, mother, fathers, nieces, you know, cousins, best friends. This hits different. You know, it's like you're mad, you're sad, you're angry, you don't know how to feel, you don't know what to think. And I thank all you guys for listening, and this is a very good thing we have going on. So I thank y'all. That's my story. My name's Afonso Sparkman. My artist name is King Tay. This is my brother. <laughs> Gio was my best, one of my buddies. He DJ some of my shows. I did a lot of stuff with him. He was a good guy. We worked downtown at the clubs. I was there. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Love you guys. Come on now. 
We're going to say Chastity's oh, and name. Your, uh, your daughter's husband is Gio's sister's. Her dude is like, I, he was like, I was like his uncle. Yeah. They went to school with my nephew Christopher and stuff. I've known he called me uncle. Yeah. Come on, so man. It's a very small world. Good people do stick together, but we got to stop leaving together. Let's go. Let's go. And we here now. See, God now bless. we all connected on a higher level. Come on now. Higher level. We're going to say Chastity Sparksman's name, y'all, again. Let's, y'all ready to say her name? Say her name. Chastity Sparkman. Say her name. Chastity Sparkman. Say her name. Chastity Sparkman. Mm-hmm. And the next mother we got, my sister, she graduated our Yayo's program. She's an alumni, mother of the movement, um, a 12-week healing program. Sister Javon Williams is the mother of Lamont Myers. Um, just like we take the community violence serious, just like we take the police violence serious, we got to take these fentanyl serious this substance abuse out there and they, they lacing all these drugs up but you don't know what okay you can't don't can't trust nothing no more you got to test everything and this sister right here started the Lamont Myers Foundation in honor of her son and what she do she she does the hard work to try to prevent what happened to her son from ever happening again and her story is is you know I've never worked with families that have been affected by substance abuse until God introduced me to um, sister Javon Williams and since I, 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 she's been in our lives, she has been nothing but love and light. She's added nothing but 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 joy to this foundation. It's hard to smile when you're in this this work, you know. And when, but whenever us mothers, the mothers get together, and with Sister Javon, it's always smiling, love, and life and laughter. Because um, although uh, we cry together a lot, sometimes we laugh together, and sometimes we got we laugh to keep from crying. So. Um, Sister uh, uh, Javon Williams is doing the work. She has these kits, um, these Lamont Meyer kits. Uh, second chance kit. Come on now, second chance kits. And these second chance kits, I think everybody should have one in their homes. And what they are is think it's some Narcan in there. It's, 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 it's some test strips in there. It's a whole bunch of stuff in there. But I want her to humanize her loved one because if, if we don't, then they're going to say, oh, he was just out there getting high and overdosed. When that wasn't the case, it was a drug-induced homicide. So poisoning. Come on now. So um, we're gonna say the name Lamont Myers, and then um, we got two more mothers, and then we're gonna get ready for the gala, because I know y'all, we gotta get back. We get we got we been kicked out ten minutes ago. So anyways, uh, Lamont Myers say his name. Lamont Myers say his name. Lamont Myers say his name. Lamont Myers. There you go, sister. Thank you so much, Stefante. Um, y'all know it's not easy when you lose a child. It's not easy. But um, February the 8th, 2020, I lost my beloved son, Lamont Samuel Myers, which is the last time I seen him. He was celebrating his 19th birthday with some friends. And um, next thing I know, um, I get a call from the corners telling me that my son passed away. The worst day ever in my life. I'm going to speed up a little bit because we all got to get out of here. But, you know, we'll talk more, um, you know, but it, it hurts. It hurts when you can't see your child, the birthdays, the holidays. I'm hurt now. We all sitting up here hurting. And the mission is to not let anyone. We got we to gotta save our kids' life. We got to help. We got to be there for them. You know, we got to bring them back to the old days. You know, we got to look out for one each other. We got to be there for them. We got to talk to them. We do, but we love them. But there's so many bad influences. We love our children. I miss my son so much. He died five days before my 45th birthday. On my 45th birthday, I'm looking at obituary pictures. February 6th was his birthday. He died February 8th. My birthday was February 11th. February 14th, that's when they first let me see him, you know, with pain and purpose. But um, I'm going to be on this mission to the day I die. Um, thank you for your time. I'm going to pass this mic. Um, also, we are having a brunch uh, May 18th. Um, at the Brookside, um, hope you guys come out and join. I'm going to sum it up, but thank you for your time. Love you so much, Stefante. You Love give me too. this voice. You give me this come voice. Come on now. Let's go. And we didn't know nothing about that brunch system. I'm glad we know now. We got dinners and brunches and everything. See, these mothers is working. Let's go. So um, um, our last mother, uh, I mean, no, not our last one. We got, we got one more. After Sister Paula just spoke to these kids, the trouble youth, some of the trouble youth, and, and, and I thought, you know, the, the Scare Scrape program ain't got nothing on Sister Paula. I'll tell you that much. She went in there and told her story to these young men. 
and 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 it, and it woke them up. They've been texting me on Instagram because they got my Instagram out there, and, and I had to block a few of them because they've been texting too much. But but she was so. They said, "When you coming back? When y'all coming back? When you bringing uh, another a sister back?" Because Sister Paula was just uh, so so uh, inspiring to these kids, and it, and the conversation was about gun violence. And since Sister Paula been in our movement, she usually don't talk at all, don't talk much at all. So for her to speak to these children and, and make time out of her day to uh, uplift those kids and tell her story to those kids really made a difference in not only their lives, but our lives as well, my life too, because I was like, wow. Um, so her daughter, Azalea Anderson, should be alive today as well. She should not be, but Sister Paula should not be here, and Sister Azalea should not be not with us. She should be here as well. So we're going to say Azalea Anderson's name, and Azalea was just a baby, like uh, all of what well, were babies. But Sister Azalea was a baby. So we're going to say Azalea Anderson's name three times. After I say, say their name, say her name, you guys say Azalea Anderson. Say her name. Azalea Anderson. Say her name. Azalea Anderson. Say her name. Azalea Anderson. Sister Paula. Okay, I'll be quick. My name's Paula Anderson. Uh, my daughter was three years old, uh, three-year-old Azalea Anderson. She was shot and killed due to community gun violence in the living room of my home on um, September 11th, so 9-11, she had got shot. And no, I don't do a lot of talking, you know, I'm more about the action, you know, I really getting out here, you know, really changing these kids' life, giving them, di giving them a different narrative, and, you know, something better to look at, you know. So I don't have too much to say because I'm really out here working. I'm not about the talking, I'm about the action, so that's what it is. Network, there we yeah. go, she about that action. Let's get it. And, and Mama Paula, she is. She out there working like she was the neighborhood auntie before all the, you know all this happened. So we're gonna say Azalea Anderson name. Say your name. Azalea Anderson. Say your name. Azalea Anderson. Now um, we got one more mother here. She's a new mother, you guys. That 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 we just got in the movement, and but she's been reaching out, and I want us all to uh, show some love for Alize here at the end. Alize. Um, babies did not die to police violence. They did not die to uh, substance abuse. They, she didn't. Their, her babies, her twin babies, did not die um, um, to community violence, but they died. And her her children were not in her care. They were in the care of the system, and the system didn't watch her babies as they were in the care of her children. And due to them not taking care of her babies while they were in custody of her babies. Both her children drowned and passed away. And this mother, you know, she she been in the back, but now she's found she's finding her voice. She's finding her voice, and we all started, y'all. Y'all remember? When this mother needs some love, because she lost the babies too. It might not be how we lost our babies, but she still lost her babies. So let's make sure we love her and and. and and she's going to be at our dinner, and let's make sure we keep our arms around her, you guys. Because um, y'all know this is a club nobody wants to be a part of. And y'all know what it's like to lose a child. Uh, sister Paula, too. Um, uh, let's make sure we wrap some love around this sister when we can. Uh, Alizé, uh, talk about your babies. Um, well, I really don't know what to say. I was telling my sister before I came in here, like, um, yeah. I, you know, I just summed it up. You know, my twins, they were in foster care. I got a call when I was in um, a, what do you call this, residential program. Um, I was at my family's house visiting them and they told me, oh, well your kids crawled through a doggy door and they drowned. There's no further information to tell you. And it's been seven months on the ninth. So yeah, I mean, I don't really know. <laughs> We're gonna say their names. And um, we're going to say their names, sincere and legend, sincere and legend, okay, you guys? How old were those babies? They were two years old, two years old. It's been seven months, no nothing. Sincere and legend. Say their names. Say their names. Say their names. 
May the life and legacy of Sincere and Legend, may the life and legacy of Marshall Miles, may the life and legacy of Soraya Jade Redman, may the life and legacy of DJ Jill, may the life and legacy of Stefan Clark, may the life and legacy of Greg Najee Grimes, may the life and legacy of Kijan Starks, may the life and legacy of Chastity Sparkman, may the life and legacy of Lamont Myers, may the life and legacy of Azalea Anderson live in a positive light, a positive light for generations and generations and generations long after you and I have left this earth. We decree it, we declare it, we pronounce it and announce it receive now thank you guys for having us everybody love everybody uh, uh, uh stefan clark sundays will be may 5th make sure you guys are there our sisters got events let's get to this gala eat this food and go home and go to bed amen <laughs> we love y'all thank y'all <laughs>